pack my bags, booked an easy jet flight, and set off to fulfil a dream that came from my own brain. I had a huge diarrhoea upon boarding the plane, then followed that up with four vodka and tonics to ease into the flight. I have terrible anxiety. Crossing uh, about 20 miles to the west of Madrid. We walked amidst the city's orange trees, checked into our hotel, and set a plan to arrive at a cafe of which I can't pronounce the name of. To fish. The mighty. Now this is going to be weird for me because it doesn't sound how it's spelled. River. De Huelva. With a barbel clam like fucking salmon in quantities you couldn't even imagine back in the UK. As I set off to meet my mystery man, I was questioning our safety. A thousand thoughts run through my mind, but the main one was... Could he be a murderer? Spoiler alert. He's not. Because uh, I wouldn't be here talking to you now. And uh, none of this would have been uploaded. So... Thanks for not being a murderer, Peter. Well, not to me anyway. I don't know what he's done before we've met. So... Let's just get back to it. Real, he's actually not a catfish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, good to actually nice to meet, meet you. you. You're real. I'm real. You're not a scammer. I'm not. I met hey. a man off the internet. But this is not just any man, this is a full time lesbian man. He's a street artist, an angler, with roots in the punk rock and skateboarding scenes. He's illustrated for famous brands such as Patagonia and Stanley. But mainly, he just does whatever the fuck he wants. I'm Peter Burge and I fish. So, for those of you that don't know, Jesus died. Um, so here, in Seville, they throw a festival called the... Semana Santa. Where people don't dress up as the KKK. There's crosses involved. Um, people are mourning the death of Jesus Christ, his holy Lord. So that sign is to do with the Romans. Yeah, this is the big uh, Sorry We Killed Jesus tour. Don't you think in this day and age they should be cancelled with anything? I think, I think in retrospect we should start a massive uh, Twitter campaign. Cancel them because they literally did kill Jesus. Yeah. Cancel the Romans. Hashtag cancel Romans. Cancel them! This is Oscar. Not just a sexy Spanish man, but a founding member of the Seville Fly Fishing Club. Previous to this, he's won the World Surf Casting Championships twice. He decided to take up fly fishing as a challenge and hasn't looked back since. The fins out of the water is absolutely magic. Gypsy barbel. So, it's a, it's a game of sight fishing. If you don't see a, a gypsy barbel, you're not going to catch it. So you need to really spot it and really perfectly cast to it because you need you need to see the direction of the fish. And then you have to imagine that the fish has a view like this. And you have to present the fly like 30 centimeters in front of the nose of the fish. And it needs to be a natural plop on the water. And either the, it's a, a nymph or a wet fly that slowly needs to sink. Or it's a dry fly like a foam beetle. But the, the, the thing that they all have in common, you need to perfectly present the fly. And you get like two free casts. 
And if you didn't do a good job, Gypsy's gone. And if you do a good job, they will very aggressively take the fly and just <laughs> go for it. Take your, your line into the backing. It's, it's, it's spectacular. Well, thank you. Gracias. Holy moly. Generally, in the, in, uh, at first I stayed away from fly fishing because of the elitist expat of it. I really did not like this whole culture of, you know, how do you call these, li these jackets, these old guys sitting oh, together. Coats, yeah, it? and they tie the most intricate flies, but none of them can really fish. They just are really good fly tires, but none of them really know anything about the habitat or actual fishing. They cannot even catch a chop in their own local water. So that's... That's always what kept me away from fly angling. When you started fishing, was it on the fly? No, no. Like everybody in the Netherlands, uh, I started fishing with a bamboo cane rod, float, oh, okay. worm. Well, where did the fly fishing start? I think it generally started because I started painting on the boat Dusseldorf show, which is the biggest boat show in Europe. Mm -hmm. And there used to be a, a sport fishing section. And the, there's two factors there that influence me on becoming a fly angler. It's the guys from Fly Fishing Nation who are always there. And they were, uh, Stefan was nice enough to give me actually my uh, first real fly rod. And he, he, uh, he gave me some tips on how to get started. And he just fucking gave me two rods just to start angling. And that's uh, kindness again. Kindness in fly fishing. It's important. It's there. Yeah. It's, it's making a comeback. I hope so. I, I generally hope that more young people start to uh, fly fish and stay away from, uh, from these like old fashioned groups. We started uh, the fly connection because I really hope that there's, there's a new generation of fly anglers that, that starts talking together and not in like an elitist type of way, like, you do some better than you. No, just like an open platform where we can discuss the art of fly fishing and just be friends with each other. Uh, one of the, um, the main projects that we did right now is Trash Anglers, which is uh, trashanglers.org. And it motivates anglers to pick up trash while they fish and lock the type of trash that they, that they find uh, on our website. Right now we have forms in seven different languages where you can lock what type of trash you find. And uh, we hope to make that into an app so people can easily lock the trash they find and not only uh, keep our waterways clean, but also provide <coughs> the scientific community uh, with data from true citizen science.
is honestly words cannot describe how amazing you did. this feeling is. This is a dream. This is a dream come true. See, see, see. I will make right on my promise to take you to a pound shop. Okay. Oscar, mm. if you ever come to the UK, I'll take you to a place called the pound shop. Day two. And this time, we're looking for carp. Ooh. If I see plumes of mud, I know there's fish feeding. And if I know that fish are feeding, I'm going to put this bad boy in their path and then boom, fish on. It's as easy as that. Except it's not easy at all. It's actually quite difficult. The carp are tending to like where the calves are, where there's mud, where there's poo. Where there's sand. I've missed two opportunities and they're very spooky. <laughs> we get over it, we move on quickly. I'm feeling disheartened. So I'm having an internal battle with myself. Um, which feels awesome. Sometimes fishing is more of a mental game than an actual fishing one. I mean, they're there, just I can't see them. Redemption. That was a tough one. In this area, it's so shallow, you can see them, you see their fins above the water, and you literally have to plant that fly directly in front of them. You don't feel them take the fly, but as soon as you see them, you know, burrow for it, strike, it's uh, challenging, but very rewarding. This seems to be the fly for Seville. I've had barbel on it and I've had carp. Let me show you just how I make it. Oosh. Camera trickery. Oof. Put me in my tie-in room. Well, hello. You can start off with some black thread, some tungsten beads, and a size 12 or 14 barbless hook. Wrap your fucking thread around the hook and give it a trim. Continue on by taking some of these feathers and putting them on your hook, like so. There we are. That's lovely. Don't throw away the scruffy bits. We'll use them for later. Wrap your thread back down towards the hook end and take out some of this delightful dubbing. Add it to your thread and wrap round, like so. Get the feathers from earlier and make a fucked up dubbing, like I'm doing here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Lord knows I'm not. And there you are. Trim it up. Get the fuck out there and catch yourself some fish. Now fucking take me back to Spain. <laughs> Amazing. I'm, not, I'm speechless and that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> oh, is this really real right now? Please. This has done me. 
anyways. I suppose that's the last fish of the episode. So, thanks for watching. On this trip, I met two wonderful men that fulfilled my dreams and provided me with unforgettable experiences I will cherish for the rest of my life. We bonded over our mutual love of conservation and fly angling, but most importantly, all the knowledge and time that was shared cost nothing but kindness, and that's something I hope prevails in our sport and interactions in general. At first I thought Spain was just a hot place for the lispy weirdos, <laughs> but it turns out they're just like us, maybe even a little bit better. They have traffic lights, old men on bikes, supermodel police officers with cracking asses, and everyone's got their own air conditioning unit. It's been a real eye-opener. Because we've not asked for anything but a marmite, and I actually do have a question. Is the marmite perfect thing, or...? Yeah, no, it's because I like marmite with butter and toast. I can only get Vegemite over here, and I don't care what people in New Zealand or Australia say, Vegemite is not the same thing, it sucks. Cancel him! Peter Perch, it's been amazing. It's been wonderful, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Brilliant, thanks. Great view. And come back to fish more. I will, I'll take off some wonder. Oh, the little, the illustrious the river wonder that I've been dying to fish. Chocolate, we should come. Yeah, I'll be very happy to meet you. That's a wrap.